So this is the first video in the gender topic. And we're going to be looking at sex and gender and sex role stereotypes. On your specification, it says specifically that you must know what sex is, what gender is. So what's the difference between the two terms that people usually get confused about? And also what sex role stereotypes are. So there are three things we're going to be looking at in this video. So the first term we're going to look at is the term sex. And like I said previously, the term sex and gender are often used incorrectly. When we use the word sex, we mean the person's biological status. So whether they are male or whether they are female. And this is usually determined by their chromosomes. Okay, And the chromosomes then will result in different hormones being released. And that eventually will result in males and females having different anatomies. So sex is basically whether you have a penis and are male, whether you have a vagina and you're female. Okay, and this is always a result of nature. It's something that's innate. You're born with a penis, you're born with a vagina. So that's what sex is, whether you are male or whether you are female. Gender, on the other hand, is the sort of psychosocial status of a person. So whether you feel masculine or whether you feel feminine. So this can include a range of different things. It includes your attitudes, your roles in life that you play, such as your jobs and the behaviours that you carry out throughout your daily lives. And whereas before we said sex was determined solely by nature and genetics and biology, gender is determined by more social norms and cultural expectations. So gender is usually formed by our environment. It's more a result of nature and nurture combined. Okay. And the big thing about gender is it's far more fluid and far more open than sex is. Okay, gender can change. You can become more masculine. You can become more feminine. Whereas sex is pretty much the majority of the time straight down the line. You are male or you are female. But gender, on the other hand, is far more open to change. You can become more masculine. You can become more feminine. So it's clear. Sex is whether you are male or female. So your biology and gender is whether you feel masculine or feminine. However, some people have something called gender identity disorder or GID. And this is where their biological sex doesn't reflect the way they feel inside. So you might be born male, but feel feminine. You might be born as a woman, but feel masculine. And that's gender identity disorder. And we're going to look a little bit at that now, uh, about this topic now. But we have a whole different video on this particular topic later on in the course. Um, and often these people may choose to have gender reassignment surgery and therefore become transgender, where they try to bring their sexual identity, so the fact they're male or female, they're trying to bring that in line with their gender identity. So they want their biology and their sort of genitals to match how they feel, how they feel with their gender. So sexual stereotypes are what we consider certain genders to do. So if I said words like put up shelves, take out the bins, preparing food, getting children ready for school. If I put these jobs and behaviours and roles up on the board here, then you will assign a set sex to carry out these jobs. You might think preparing food, female job, taking out the bins, male job. So it's putting these set behaviours to a particular sex. There's no biological reason whatsoever why these jobs should be carried out by a specific gender. Okay, There's no biological reason whatsoever. But where these sexual stereotypes come from really are the shared expectations that people have within a society about what's acceptable, what's not acceptable for set genders to do. Okay, So we have Usual behaviours for males, usual behaviours for females. And it's usually down to society making that decision. And that behaviour gets reinforced. So remember with reinforcement, you've got positive, negative reinforcement, punishment. These behaviours are always reinforced through people like our parents, the peers, media, as we refer to in psychology as significant others. And what happens is all this leads to 
is sexist assumptions being formed that men do these roles women can only do these roles and they can't do each other's and if you think about it, young children are probably given these sexual stereotypes from birth little boys don't cry i definitely tell that to my boy boys don't cry get up stop crying whenever he falls over it's just a natural thing i've done as a parent and parents will do that over and over again with their boys Little girls don't like climbing trees. So straight away, you're giving them this sexual stereotype that girls can't do more challenging or physical tasks. And children are generally given these stereotypes from birth. So now we're going to have a look at the evaluation points for sex, gender and sexual stereotypes. So in 2014, Ingal Halaka conducted a study where he did MRI brain scans of 949 young men and women and you can see the results just up here in the corner these are the actual results from his brain scan and what he found was that women so these top two up here the top two brains had far better connections between the left and right hand sides of the brain you can see there's far more connectivity between the two whereas men so these bottom two brains here had far more intense connections in individual parts of the brain. So you can see around here, there's quite an intense connection around here, intense connections. But if you look at women, it's far more connected throughout the brain. So for men, there's far, far less connectivity between the parts of the brain in these red sections here. So women have better connections, males have far more intense connections in certain parts of the brain. So I suppose the conclusion we take from this is that women are going to be far more better at multitasking because there's so much connection in different parts of the brain, whereas men are better at single complex tasks. They've got complex connections in certain parts of the brain, which allows them to carry out far more complicated tasks, but far fewer of them. So I suppose this biological reason for sex role stereotypes. Men and women might have different behaviours because their brains are structured in that particular way. Smith and Lloyd is a very famous study, and you'll come back to this one over and over again in some of the different essays and topics we're going to be doing. So it's a very good study to know inside out. And what they did was they observed mothers playing with an infant who was either presented to them as a boy or as a girl. So it might have been a little baby boy, but they dress it up as a girl and give it to the mother to play with. What they found was that the mothers selected gender appropriate toys for that child. So if I dressed the little boy up as a girl, the mother would choose dolls to play with the child, uh, give him fairy wings, all the stereotypical girl toys to play with. And it also show far more motor activity and try and be more physical with the child if it was presented to them as a boy. So boys were given trucks, girls were given dolls. So this shows us straight away that children are, and sexual stereotypes are reinforced from a very early age. Parents will reinforce these sexual stereotypes by treating children differently, by giving them certain toys. Like we saw, the boys were given far more um, physical activity and motor activity. So it shows us that sexual stereotypes are partly a result of nurture and the environment that we live in. So we're going to have a quick look at a real world application of this particular um, theory. And it was an article first published in Times Magazine about a British couple who raised their child as gender neutral. And there's a picture of the child and mother there. So the child always knew he was a boy. Uh, he had a penis, so he straight away knew it was clear he was a boy but he was raised in a gender neutral manner. So the parents didn't treat him as a boy by giving him trucks and climbing trees or treat him just as a girl, giving dolls. They raised him gender neutral. And he didn't identify with any gender. He didn't see himself as masculine. He didn't see himself as feminine. And there was a storm of protest once this story came out that people were saying the child was being abused, that to treat a child this way was wrong and that children should be brought up either masculine or feminine as a boy or as a girl and it shows us really that people feel very very strongly about sex role stereotypes and that these are really important for healthy gender development 
And I suppose the big thing is that there's still a long way to go in promoting the benefits of androgyny. And androgyny is where someone has a balance of masculine and feminine characteristics. And it's a topic we're going to be looking at a little bit later on in the course.